So you just sat a one hour queue and zoned into a lobby, where your partner is a male human fury warrior with cape and helmet showing. They then tell you to train the resto druid all game because they saw one twitch clip where this actually worked. And at this very moment you know you are in for a rough time. We all know this is a huge problem. Sometimes the outcome of each round can be decided before the gates even open if your team isn't hitting the right targets. Go on the mage, 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 go on the mage. But not to worry, because in today's guide, we will break down target selection in three levels. The first level will be a basic targeting tier list, where we will be ranking each spec based on how difficult it is to kill for the average lobby. Then we will take this a step further and apply the targeting tier list to actual solo shuffle rounds, so you know who is best to attack when up against three enemy players. Finally, we will briefly cover the third level of targeting, which will explain some fundamentals for maximizing pressure in solo shuffle. Once all of this is done, we guarantee that you will feel much more confident in how you approach every single solo shuffle game. After all, confidence is a huge part of doing well in PvP. It's more than just hitting the right target and doing the right things, but actually believing in your gameplay. And if you need that confidence boost to set you on the right track, look no further than skillcap.com. We are so confident in your ability to improve that we even offer a money back guarantee if you don't gain at least 400 rating while actively using our website. If you want to learn the same damage and healing rotations as the world's best players, we've got you covered. And we even have a library of hundreds of solo shuffle commentaries where rank one players guide you step by step through their own arena lobbies. With all of this content, it's no wonder that skill cap members are able to stay ahead of the competition every season. So what are you waiting for? Visit the link below to get started. Anyway, back to the video. We will start at level 1 for solo shuffle targeting. Here we will make things simple by going over 3 target tier lists, ranking each melee, ranged, and healer based on how squishy they are in solo play. Before we show you the full targeting tier list, let's understand what makes something difficult to kill in solo shuffle. For one, it's probably not the best idea to train someone who is passively tanky. If a spec has a bunch of automatic and built in damage mitigation, then it can be a waste of time to try and tunnel them down, since one huge part of winning solo shuffle is simply doing the most damage possible for the longest period of time. This goes hand in hand with defensive cooldowns. If a class has a bunch of highly efficient defensive CDs that aren't affected by dampening, then it might take too long to rotate through all of them before actually being able to score a kill. When these forms of tankiness are combined with high mobility or escape tools that allow a spec to instantly avoid damage without sacrificing much of its own, well, you have some of the makings for a target that will be super hard to take down. And I know what some of you are thinking, wait, don't we need to sit on some targets to prevent them from casting? Yes, this is important too, but this will be covered in level 2. Anyway, if a spec has a lot of passive tankiness, multiple efficient defensives, and is highly mobile, you have the makings of a difficult target to take down in solo shuffle. With that in mind, let's kick things off with the absolute tankiest melee DPS targets. These are the specs that you might want to think twice about attacking all game. First up is Death Knight, which is arguably the hardest target to take down, at least in the early stages of the game. That's because at lower levels of dampening, the combination of AMS and Death Strike can make them quite durable into different forms of damage. But once dampening stacks high enough, these cooldowns become less of an issue. A bigger problem lies in some of their passive defense throughout the game, with spell warding and will of the necropolis making them really tanky into spell damage. The one thing truly lacking from their toolkit is mobility, but overall DKs are generally bad targets until higher levels of dampening are reached. Next up, Demon Hunter. Look, we know some of their defensives just got nerfed, but they are still durable into various sources of damage. With two passives that reduce magic damage taken, Demon Hunters basically have a permanent bark skin up in any lobby with casters. Against melee, Blur is still one of the most efficient tools at mitigating damage, acting as both an evasion and wall on just a one minute cooldown, which doesn't get nerfed by dampening. And finally, the fact that Demon Hunter is so mobile can make it harder to actually pin them down. Of course, most DH players don't bother to kite away, but they certainly could when absolutely needed. Now you might be wondering, okay, but who are the best melee to attack? Well, let's break it down. First up is Assassination Rogue. Of all three rogue specs, this one is by far the squishiest. What we've been seeing in Solo Shuffle is many Asa Rogues dropping elusiveness for cheat death, which means that they have very little passive damage reduction. And while subtlety has two charges of vanish, Assassination only has one, which doesn't even heal them or provide a shield like it does for most sub rogue builds. What this means is that once you manage to force a trinket from an Asa Rogue, the only thing you really need to worry about is cheat death, but even then they are still squishy enough to die to raw damage. 
Rhett Paladins are in a very similar situation. Instead of passive defensives, Rhett comes equipped with self-healing, which of course gets significantly worse the longer the game goes on. Their only true defensive is Bubble, which admittedly is one of the best cooldowns to have in the bracket. But once Bubble is gone, Rhett Paladins really start to struggle at living once dampening ramps high enough. This is especially true considering that Rhett Paladin has really bad mobility compared to other melee. If it gets caught out in the open against a caster heavy lobby, the Rhett Paladin will feel completely miserable. Sandwiched in between both extremes, we have the neutral melee targets. These aren't necessarily bad to attack, but certainly not the best. Let's take Feral Druid as our first example. Thanks to increased armor and stamina, they are practically immortal in bear form until higher levels of dampening are able to counter frenzied regeneration healing. But does this mean you should never attack them? Well, no, since forcing them in bear form means their damage output gets absolutely destroyed. Right now, a lot of their sustained pressure comes from Primal Wrath, which requires spending combo points in cat form. So if you manage to scare them away for a bit, their damage output can tank. The same is true for Warriors. Their version of bear form is Defensive Stance, which helps mitigate some damage at the cost of a huge damage loss. This is literally a double-edged sword for the class. In order to not die, they need to basically give up any chance at landing a kill. And since Die by the Sword has an awkwardly disjointed cooldown and enraged regen gets hurt by dampening, the defensive options of both specs can sometimes feel a bit limited in longer games. And with that, we have our rankings of melee DPS from tankiest to squishiest when it comes to targeting. The best targets are those without much passive defense, and in the case of both hybrids here, these might also rely on healing-based options. Despite being passively squishy, a spec like Windwalker Monk can be difficult to take down due to their sheer amount of defensive cooldowns coupled with their high mobility. In general though, DKs are usually the hardest to kill, which can help explain their success in the bracket. With our melee covered, let's dive into the hardest range DPS to attack. Again, these will be the ones that are generally the most difficult to kill. Here we have both Arcane and Frost Mage. Now of course you might be thinking, wait just a minute, mages wear cloth, how could they be tanky? Well, their tankiness is tied to a few different things. For one, many arcane mages will play with Shimmer, giving them two charges of blink. They then will have an automatic sprint thanks to Chrono Shift, which also slows targets hit by arcane barrage. And finally, every time they press barrier, they will instantly remove all snares. Taken together, this means arcane mages can be super slippery. As for Frost, melee targets might struggle to stay connected thanks to Frostbite, which is an RNG root effect on an entirely separate DR from their normal Novas. All mage specs also have access to Alter Time, which is an efficient CD that is not affected by dampening. Frost mages also have two uses of Ice Block in Solo Shuffle. Unless a priest or a warrior is on the enemy team, two complete damage immunities means they can be quite hard to take down. On the opposite end of the spectrum, let's quickly cover one of the squishiest ranged DPS. This title belongs to Devastation Evoker. On paper, it would seem like this spec would be hard to kill since they can seemingly zoom around the map all game, right? Well, not quite. Even though Hover feels strong at first, its 35 second recharge time makes it way less efficient than Shimmer. Combine this with a longer cooldown on their root effect and melee will definitely have more uptime while attacking these flying lizards. And once they do connect, Devastation Evokers have fairly limited defensive tools to survive enemy cooldowns. One of their only options is Renewing Blaze, which is a healing based defensive, meaning it is far weaker in higher levels of dampening. Somewhere in the middle, we have our neutral ranged targets. Let's go over one key example. Here we have Shadow Priest, but wait just a second, isn't this one of the tankiest casters around? Well, they used to be until Focused Will saw a nerf in a recent round of hotfixes. Now that they are taking slightly increased damage, they have become a more appealing target. Outside of this though, Shadow Priest utility options are great for keeping their partners alive, like being able to grip a stun or mass dispel CC, but these things don't necessarily help keep the priest alive when they are the target. And with that, we have our tier list ranking each range DPS spec by how tanky it is in Solo Shuffle. The squishiest targets are generally those who take a lot of passive damage, while possibly having one or more healing based defensives. You might be wondering why Demo Warlock is harder to kill than Destro and Affliction. A huge part of this is Soul Link, which gives Demo damage reduction rather than the bonus HP that the other specs receive, since Demo does not play Grimoire of Sacrifice. The true hybrid specs can be a bit difficult to kill due to the nature of having self healing options. Before we go over healers, we have one huge disclaimer. Just because a healer is squishy doesn't necessarily make it good to attack, but we will be covering that in level 2, so be sure to stay tuned. With that out of the way, let's go over the tankiest healer in Solo Shuffle. This spot belongs to Resto Druid. Most of their passive tankiness is tied to the fact that Resto can typically avoid all damage in the first place. As one of the most mobile healers, it can be hard to even connect onto them. Even if you manage to lock them down, a simple tranquility is usually enough to shut down any momentum. Remember, complete damage immunities are the strongest defensives in Solo Shuffle, and with Inner Peace, there is almost no counter to tranquility. 
Now, this isn't to say killing druids is impossible, and there are good times to actually hit them, like when they are overextended without a trinket, but for the most part, training them all game is a waste of time. On the other hand, we have our squishiest healers. Again though, these aren't always the best to attack, and we will explain that in level 2. First up is Resto Shaman. This really shouldn't come as any surprise, especially for you melee DPS. Shamans have some of the worst mobility out of any healer and rely heavily on smaller damage reduction cooldowns in order to stay alive. The issue is that none of these CDs can be used while stunned. This means if you manage to force out a trinket from the shaman, they are highly susceptible to dying in future stun setups, especially in deep dampening. Surprisingly, we're also putting Holy Paladin in the squishy healer category. Despite wearing plate, Paladins are still quite vulnerable to lockdown, with Divine Protection being a relatively weak cooldown to press while stunned compared to the options other healers have. And once Bubble is on CD, Holy Paladins might find it hard to avoid lethal damage due to their limited mobility. At this point, some of you might be wondering where the middle ground is between these extremes, so let's give one key example. Here we have both healing priest specs. Remember that focused will ability, the one that is nerfed for shadow? Well, as disc and holy, it isn't nerfed, and stacks twice for 30% total damage reduction when hit by melee attacks. This helps offset their lower armor values, and when combined with a slew of defensive cooldowns, especially fly for holy, priests can actually be slightly more difficult to take down, even for melee. Surprisingly, we're also putting Preservation of Ochre as a neutral target. Again, their passive tankiness is relatively weak, but they more than make up for it with their wide array of healing cooldowns. Outside of that, being able to lock down an evoker can be difficult in the first place thanks to Nullifying Shroud. Unless you have a purge effect on your team to strip away this buff, you won't actually be able to set up any kill thanks to the CC immunity. But if you manage to burn through both Nullifying Shroud and Emerald Communion, evokers are fairly vulnerable, especially since their limited range means they will almost always be an easy swap target. And with that we have a complete picture of our targeting tier list for healers in solo shuffle. Again, the best targets to attack are generally those with limited mobility and weak defensive options when stunned. Despite being able to port while stunned, Mistweaver is in the middle. This is because they are generally more vulnerable to passive sources of damage, even if they are practically immune to stun setups. Now let's move on to level 2, where we put the tier lists into action. Here we will need to follow some basic PvP rules. The first rule is pretty simple. If you are playing against double melee or double caster, you are generally safe to just follow the tier lists to figure out the best target. For instance, say your lobby has an assassination rogue and a demon hunter on the enemy team. It really doesn't matter what comp you are playing, the rogue will almost always be the better target since they are squishier against every form of damage. This works the same for a double caster. Imagine a lobby against a devastation evoker and an elemental shaman. Again, this is fairly straightforward. The evoker is squishier, so selecting them as a main target is usually a safe pick. Of course, lobbies are prone to changing, and you will run in situations where you have both a melee and a caster on the enemy team. This is where things start to deviate. Generally speaking, casters are more appealing targets since solo shuffle is all about maximizing damage your team deals while minimizing the damage your team takes. So by attacking a caster, you can potentially stop damage and CC from landing while also zoning them further away from your team, which together help reduce their total pressure. This brings us to rule number two, which is to always attack the enemy caster in a mixed lobby, unless they are paired with a squishy melee. For instance, say you are in a lobby against a demo warlock and an arms warrior. Both of these are neutral targets. Here though, we will stop more damage and CC by going on the demo warlock. There will be times where we want to hit the warrior, like if the warlock ports away, but for the most part we should be putting the majority of our pressure into the enemy warlock to stop them from casting. But now imagine you are up against a ret paladin and an arcane mage. Here we have a squishy melee with a tanky caster. This is where we use the exception to our rule. Even though the mage might deal a ton of damage, they are also really good at avoiding it and can even cast on the move. If you are playing as double melee in this scenario, you will be spending more time chasing the mage than actually dealing damage. Instead, you could just hit the ret paladin, who has weaker mobility and less efficient defensive cooldowns. Finally, we need to address what to do when it comes to selecting healers as a kill target. This is where things are a bit tricky. For one, you should avoid ever tunneling the tanky healers. This mostly means druids but can apply to some neutral healers. Training a resto druid is needlessly risky and only works against inexperienced players. Squishy healers are much better targets, but to score a kill, you will likely need a reliable stun on your team in order to completely lock them down. Unless they are carelessly overextended in the middle of the map or pushed deep into your team, it will be hard trying to force a kill without some form of lockdown. On top of this, if the healer is playing with one or more caster DPS, especially once the spammable CC, then trying to tunnel down the healer might leave your team vulnerable to casted damage and peels, which together will make your healer's job quite stressful. 
Instead, this points us to rule number three. Avoid tunneling healers unless you have a reliable stun and they have two melee on their team. Of course, there are exceptions to every rule, but for the most part, you should follow these three guidelines when choosing which target to attack the most in your solo lobby. Number one, against double melee or double caster, you can safely follow the tier list to figure out who to attack. Number two, against melee caster lobbies, always attack the caster unless it is a squishy melee. Number three, only tunnel non-tanky healers if you have a stun and they have two melee on their team. With our first two levels out of the way, let's briefly cover level three, which is all about maximizing pressure in dampening. This topic will be covered extensively in a follow-up video, so be sure to subscribe for its upcoming release. Until then though, we will be giving you a preview. Obviously, one of the core features of Solo Shuffle is how quickly dampening stacks in the bracket. Within the first few minutes of each round, everyone on your team will have a passive Mortal Strike debuff that will only get stronger as the game goes on. Because of this, your gameplay will need to change as dampening gets higher and higher. For one, your goal in Solo Shuffle, no matter what, is to maximize your damage output. You always want to be hitting a target no matter what, since you need to be pressuring the enemy healer's mana bar while you gradually take down the HP of one or more targets. So, say a warlock teleports away behind a pillar and you're left in the middle. You could try and chase them with a gap closer instantly, but if that's not an option, it is pointless to try and pursue them while waddling like a penguin in the center of the map. Instead, you should keep up tempo by always hitting whatever you can. And this applies to both melee and range DPS. If someone gets away from you and you can't instantly chase them, start attacking someone else immediately until you can reconnect. Again, you want to be maximizing total damage at all costs. This also means not attacking into defensives, but this should be obvious. If you're playing as a melee cleave into an assassination rogue with evasion up, there's no need to attack into them without a stun, even if they are a squishy target. The same applies to healing cooldowns. If you are up against a resto druid team and the target has a full row of hots and scenarian ward, you probably won't kill through unless less dampening is high enough and you have multiple offensive cooldowns popped. Again though, advanced target selection solo shuffle requires you to know how to adjust your gameplay to higher levels of dampening, and the second video in our solo shuffle series will guide you through that topic. And if you are interested in learning how to navigate Solo Shuffle for your class, we've got hundreds of arena commentaries available now at skillcap.com. Our website features gameplay breakdowns from pro players who take you through their lobbies and guide step by step through each matchup. When you combine this with our damage and healing courses, you have all the information you need to start climbing the ladder. This even comes equipped with a rating gain guarantee. If you don't gain at least 400 points while actively using our guides, we refund you. Simple as that. So if you want to take the next steps on your solo shuffle journey, visit skillcap.com to get started. Anyway, that wraps it up for this one. Let us know your experiences in solo shuffle and type in the comments below what topics you would like us to cover in future videos. As always, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.